Hey guys, I'm Rob Blight, and today we're going to be looking at the Nikon 500mm PF lens and we're going to be comparing it to the Nikon 200-500mm f5.6. I've been shooting with this lens for about two years and I've now had the 500 PF for a few weeks so I'm going to go over some of my thoughts in this video of sort of the differences between these two lenses and why you might pick one over the other. Maybe you already shoot the 200 to 500 and you're thinking of upgrading, or maybe you're just in the market for a new wildlife lens and you're not sure which of these two to get, so I'll try and answer some of those questions in this video. All right, let's get to it. So what about build quality? The 200 to 500 is average Nikon quality. It's a zoom lens, so you've got this whole barrel assembly here which can actually move a bit and I've actually had some issues in my shots because of that. Also if you're ever shooting in the rain, if you can imagine you're out in the rain and it's raining on your lens which happens all the time when you do wildlife photography, every time you zoom this lens in and out you're pulling all of that water from the lens barrel inside the lens. So yeah that can't be good. On the other hand this lens feels a bit more solid bit nicer to hold, full weather sealing, and yeah, just feels better in your hand as well. The focus ring is also smoother. I much prefer the feel of this. Compared to the 200 to 500, the focus ring is a little bit too loose. Sometimes you accidentally hit it and um, throw your focus off. Oh yeah, another thing regarding build quality, um, the lens hood actually has a button now, so the 200 to 500 didn't have that. I never had any problems, but I did hear that some people had complaints of the lens hood falling off. So I think with this lens, with the release button, it's going to be a bit more solid. So hopefully that problem is solved. Oh, and in terms of the uh, tripod foot, there have been some reports of these falling off. Um, I don't know, I just shoot this lens handheld. So for me, I took it off on the first day and uh, I didn't really plan to use it. So and I think if you're going to shoot this lens handheld, I don't really see the point of having the tripod foot attached. Yeah, the VR on this 200-500 is pretty good. I find for myself, um, if I'm shooting at 500 millimeters, I like to keep the shutter speed around 1 250th, maybe 1 125th. If you start going lower than that, then the results become really unpredictable, but I find 1 250th, 1 125th is about right. Um, most of your shots will be very sharp. Although you can go lower, but it becomes way less uh, reliable. Another thing that always bothered me about this lens regarding the VR is if you're ever shooting birds in flight, for some reason, I don't know what it is, the panning on this lens just isn't that good. I never had much success with it. So I kind of feel like just turning VR off and just using a high shutter speed is the way to go. Onto the 500 PF is a different story. I'd say the VR on this lens is quite a lot better than the VR on the 200 500. I can drop the shutter speed down to 1 60th and guess, get most shots very sharp. You can even go lower, 1 30th, even 1 15th is almost unthinkable, but you can actually get quite sharp shots with this lens at that shutter speed. Obviously you need a fairly steady hand, it's best if you kneel down and rest your elbow on your knee, you know, try and get a really stable position, something like that. But um, it is possible to do, so I'd say this lens is better in low light for sure. Yeah, and also the panning on this lens, the VR just, whatever they've done, Nikon have definitely refined it because when I'm panning with this lens, even just on VR normal, I find that I get much better results when panning and it's much easier to get birds in flight shots sharp compared to what I was used to on the 200 to 500. So the focusing on the 500 PF is a bit faster than the 200 to 500. Um, I would say, once you start comparing it to things like the 70 to 200 f2.8, this lens, this is the fastest focusing lens I own by far. And while the 500 PF doesn't quite get close to it, it is much better than the 200 500. That's most important for like focus acquisition. So when, when you first see the animal, maybe a bird's flying past, you can point the lens at it and, you know, just hit AF on and it'll pretty much lock on um, almost instantly or at least much faster than it would be with the 200-500, which would tend to hunt back and forward. I feel like the autofocus motor on this lens is just much more refined, it's quieter, it seems more accurate as well. So in terms of sharpness, the 200-500 to 
is pretty sharp, I would say it would probably exceed most people's expectations for what it is, a relatively inexpensive zoom lens. When shooting at 500mm f5.6, you're going to get really sharp results with this lens, as long as you're shooting at a high enough shutter speed and you're not having issues with motion blur. But with the 500pf, it just has that extra sharp, contrasty quality that you just don't quite get with the 200-500. Um, and it's one of the reasons I like shooting with this lens. Like the images out of it just look clearer, they have like more clarity, more contrast, and they're sharper. This lens on the D850, I mean, this lens is sharp, the D850 is 46 megapixels, and when you zoom in and you look at the detail, it's amazing. You suddenly realize why you spent the, the extra money, because your pictures just look so good. Uh, the front elements are the same size on both of these lenses. Although I will say that in terms of actual optical light gathering, the 500PF does seem to take in about a third of a stop more light than the 200-500, which is pretty cool because obviously they're both f5.6 lenses, but obviously the more light you can take in, the better your results are going to be. Another thing I've noticed is this lens has worse focus breathing. From my testing, I think that both of these lenses actually have the inverse of what people usually think of when they talk about focus breathing, which is with these lenses, when you focus closer, the focal length actually gets longer. So you can test this if you set your aperture to f22 in live view and then rack the focus ring back and forward. You can actually see when you're at close focusing distance, the field of view just tightens in a bit. However, this lens has more of that negative focus breathing. So you're actually getting a bit more focal length when you're at close range or medium range. Once you add all of these things together, the longer focal length from the focus breathing, that gives you a bit more shallow depth of field. You have more sharpness and more clarity and a third of a stop more light. So when you add all those things together, your, your, your results look a lot better with this lens than they do with this lens. And I've noticed this on my own pictures. So who is this lens for? Um, I think if you're the type of person who, similar to myself, if you like to walk around with your lens, you like to shoot handheld, you're not really sitting in a hide all day or, or driving around all the time. If you just like hiking and you just want a small, more lightweight, compact lens to carry with you, I think this lens is perfect. And while I have carried the 200-500 around all day before, it's pretty heavy and after a while it does start to wear on you. This, it almost feels like there's nothing there by comparison. I think the best thing about this lens for me is obviously the small size, but also the VR is just so good. I, I love shooting in low light and having my shutter speed set to 1 60th of a second all the time means that I can keep low ISO even in fairly dim conditions, which is amazing. You know, there have been plenty of times with the 200 to 500 where it's just been a bit too big, a bit too heavy, and I'm just like, Ah, I'm just gonna leave it at home because you know, am I really gonna see anything worth shooting? Whereas with this lens, it's pretty much one of those lenses that you can bring everywhere with you, which is awesome. If you think about how good this lens is optically, I mean, it's as good as a 500 f4. It's just f5.6 and a lot smaller. And if you look at some of the posts from people online who shoot 500mm f4s, that's exactly what they say. They say it's like the 500 f4, same sharpness, just you get that one stop less light. Yeah, this is an exciting lens. It's, it's more fun to use and shoot with than the 200-500. I think it's kind of hard to go wrong with the 200-500. I mean, it's so much cheaper and it gives you that 500mm reach and it's sharp, the VR is good. I mean, I've captured some amazing shots with this lens and I do love it. It's not that much heavier. Um, it is a bit annoying to have to click and unclick and zoom every time you use it because most of the time you're going to be at 500 millimeters but yeah especially if you're just on a budget and like the 500 pf is just way too much money for you then the 200 500 you can't really go wrong it's still a great lens i've still captured loads of amazing images over the couple of years that i've had this but i would be a bit hesitant to use it in the rain um, i have done it before and it was fine but I have had some issues with water getting into the uh, seal around the zoom ring. Um, it ha doesn't seem to have any long-term impacts, 
but I did go through a time where there was a couple of days where every time I'd zoom the lens in and out, there would be like a smear of water on the barrel from inside the lens, which is not ideal, obviously. But when you're out in the rain, you get some of your best shots. So yeah, I guess for me, I just kind of use it in the rain anyway, but I would generally try not to get this wet. Yeah, I've used the hell out of this lens. You can see the uh, locking switch is um, kind of snapped in half, like it still works, can still click it, but the actual switch itself is kind of broken in half. I've also had some issues where the autofocus will stop working and then on the back, on the uh, top screen of the camera, it'll show like error, like ER error. Um, and I just have to wait like 10, 20 seconds for it to kind of clear and then I can start using it again. But it's really frustrating when that happens, especially when you're trying to get a shot. If you need your lens to be reliable, water resistant, you're going to be using it out in the field, you know, especially if you're a profes professional and you're doing this for money, I would say maybe this isn't quite good enough for professionals. Or if you do use it professionally, at least have some kind of backup lens. For size comparison, here's the 70 to 200. The weight is about the same as well. Oh, and here's the 300 PF, in case you wanted to see how the size compares to that. Oh, and by the way, I guess I can do a super quick comparison to the 300 PF. So this lens is a bit sharper, um, but otherwise in terms of optics, they're both really good. They both have that kind of pro uh, contrast and pop to them that you'd expect. I will say that the VR on the 300 PF isn't that good. You generally have to keep your shutter speed quite a bit higher than you do with the 500 PF. But this does have the f4 aperture, so there's, assuming you can get close enough to your subject, you know, this is an amazing option and way cheaper as well. So yeah, the pretty underrated lens, this one right here. And look at this. When you zoom the 200 to 500 all the way to 500, it's this big. And the 500 PF is this big. Which would you rather carry? All right, well, I think that about does it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little review comparison type thing. Please subscribe. This is a new channel. I've got lots of videos down the line planned, so please stick around and um, I've got plenty more coming. And if you're also into wildlife photography like me, then uh, maybe I'll see you out in the field. All right, see you later. Man, did anyone else pre-order this lens like months ago? I ordered mine in early September and I had to wait three months to get it. So yeah, if you're waiting, just know that it is worth the wait and I'm sure you'll get it soon.